Another sample I will show you from this time from Fairmont Fougere. Let's dive into the detail of this. In the coffee or in the restaurants, as a general, we have some kind of benches. What is the bench? The bench is, is, is something like this. This is the section of the bench. The bench that you see in the malls, that you see in cafes. You need to have this part and this part removable. It's not fixed there forever. So you mean it's not built in furniture, this piece? It looks built in. Technically, it has to be removable. Technically, for maintenance the issues. Body, the body, the, the structural body is supposed to be built into the, fixed to the wall. Exactly. The, this one, this structure. Yes, yeah, this structure. is what I mean. Yeah. But exactly. the outside is movable, yes. This one and this one yeah. is movable for technical reasons. Yes, yes. Now, how you install this one? Once you build this structure, this box, this piece, I'm telling you now one of the secrets of the, of the work. So when you see a bench, you will know how it's constructed in a very simple way. This piece is uh, removable. You fix this box first on support. This piece is not there. Bear with me. And then I bring this piece. This piece is a, an MDF panel, wood panel, wrapped with the fabric. See the fabric, how it goes? With the foam, there is multi-layer foam on this. See, one, two, three layers of foam for technical reasons. And we'll talk about foam types later. So this foam is this fabric and foam is wrapped all around the piece and fixed in the factory. This. And then you bring this L shape, sort of speak, this L-shaped piece, you bring it, and then you put your hands below this, and you fix it by screws from top, from bottom. Because simply, there should be no screws visible here. For safety reason, for beauty reason, for design reason, for whatever. I don't need any screws here. So what to do? You fix it from bottom. And then you cover the small piece. And about the small piece, you can cover it with beautiful piece of metal with a little silicone. Later, you might need to remove this one. You just remove it with... We can fix also some, some hidden screw below, very minimal hidden screws, in order to be accessible later and removable later. Of course, this one, you can, it, it, it shouldn't be uh, removable all around. You can specify certain locations where you just have to put the screws. This piece is installed relatively simple, but it's not also fixed. This piece has to be removable. So what you do is you fix the wood structure first, and then you bring the piece with wrapped fabric and wrapped foam, and then you install it in a certain way that we call hook and button. So the, the, the piece on the wall is like this, then you fix the other piece like this. It's like some kind of hook. I would love to demonstrate it on drawings, but uh, we, we, can, we can explain it later. I might, I might try to do it here. Hopefully that it can be clear enough. I will do it on X large scale, so it can be visible. So we install the piece on the wall in very simple manner. We install it this way. And then I bring the other piece. This is the other piece. Where this other piece comes? Very simple, straightforward. This is jointer, right? This is mitre joint. You call it, you call it mitre joint. You call it hook and button. It has many names and many shapes and many techniques. This is there forever. It won't move. Why? Physics. You use the simple physics. Normally, and you know, in many cases, the simplest way 
is the most effective way. Don't get it complicated. Always, always try to simplify things as much as possible. For installation sake and for maintenance sake and for even quality sake. Try to simplify it as much as possible. So this is a very simple way to hook things to the wall. We, we can go to other detail as far as the time is concerned. Now, we are again back into the key plan. This time for the flooring. This is an indication of how we lay the flooring tiles. Normally, we give the, the tiles to the tile man and he say, when we say, listen, you have this room, you just lay the tiles and fix it and, you know, thank you very much. Okay. In high quality pro projects, that's not the case. In high quality projects, I want to know what is the size of the joint here? I have to specify very clearly to the tile man that I need joint with this size here. Or I will tell him that I will need full tile to start from the, from the entrance and I want it to end this way in the end. So I will determine how my tiles will look like. Why? Simple reason. Because the joints of the tiles, it has a relationship with the joints of the wall tiles. Simple as this. There is, in the interior contracting, there's nothing worse than having joint of floor tiles is not matching with the joint of the wall tile. This is ugly. This is failure in interiors. I'm talking about high-end interiors. Of course, Satwa interiors is something else. <laughs> <laughs> you can have Satwa interiors everywhere, no problem. For high-quality buildings, for high-quality interiors, you need to think of the smallest, tiniest detail because it will make a difference. Because your client might not have experience in doing the contracting and the interiors, but might have a taste. This is logic, this is common sense. I mean, why should the, the, the joint of the flooring not match with the joint of the wall? There's no logic. But I tell you why. In some cases, the size of the tile of the flooring is different from the size of the tile of the wall. That one case. In this case, what you do, you change the direction of the floor tile. It's so many techniques, we can talk about it later. We are back to our class. This is a layout indicating the flooring layout of the tiles, that how you need to lay the tiles. If we zoom into the detail, you will see how these uh, tiles are intended to be installed. We'll try to zoom in as quick as we can with the help of this beautiful laptop. I will mention very small detail about the interaction between normal tiles and the threshold. Threshold is a world of its own. Threshold can be a space um, a determining uh, factor. It can be level determining factor, and it can be technical assistance in holding water from going somewhere to somewhere. In this case, you have the threshold is working three in one. This threshold is determining the places. This threshold is holding the water from coming from here to here. And in the same time, there is a little a little difference in the level here that actually having some touch of decorative detail that this flooring and this flooring is different. So I have a little bit uh, slightly height in this threshold to indicate in very elegant way to setting the borders as we say. I'm setting the borders. This is the space. This is separate space and this is the upper space. 
Mohandas Anas, uh, sorry, Engineer Anas, is this the same that we are using for utilizing for visually impaired people, those they can they cannot see because you know they are blind people. Maybe threshold, maybe it could be help them. They can touch by feet, you know, there is some projected, you know, something on the floor. Yeah, there's a whole lots of standards for this visually impaired people. Not only thresholds. It's like um, um, the groove of the, of the tile itself. It, we might go into this detail, particularly, I'm, I'm talking about the standard, standard uh, uh, contracting business, but for such people, there's specific, let's say, measures to make sure that the space that they are living in is safe for them. It's, it's, co it's a complete measure. It's full of detail, not only for the flooring, for the walls, for the furniture, for the type of the furniture, for the, for the handle type. It's everything. It's complete standard. And by the way, all the standard we are working in here is from the BS standard. Not the BS you know about, but you know, it's British standard. So we have other BS, no, that's not our concern now. British standard is our standard in UAE in determining uh, all the uh, architectural drawing, let's say, because interior uh, drawing are part of architectural drawing. It's like subsidiary of architectural drawing, but going into more uh, details. So um, I don't know if we can, if we have time to do one more drawing.